Hegel's master-slave dialectic explained Hegel's renowned passage, known as the master-slave dialectic, embodies his core philosophical ideas. This notion has greatly influenced various theories of philosophy and psychology. Philosophers often find it useful to narrate a hypothetical conversation or confrontation between individuals in order to illustrate a theoretical idea. Plato's famous Socratic dialogues are an example of this. Similarly, Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel's master-slave dialectic tells the story of a confrontation between two self-conscious individuals that results in a fight to the death. Understanding this passage from Hegel's Phenomenology of Spirit is significant not only because it encapsulates the core elements of his whole philosophy, but also because of its profound subsequent influence. Hegel's Master-Slave Dialectic A Philosophical Myth Anyone who has delved into the history of philosophy has probably come across famous hypothetical narratives written to concretize philosophical conceptions. Plato's allegory of the cave from the Republic stands as a significant example from ancient philosophy. In order to elucidate his theory of forms, Plato sets up a scenario in which a group of people in a cave are deceived by shadows, which are mere reflections of reality. The objects under the sunlight. A modern instance, Thomas Hobbes' theory of the state of nature from Leviathan demonstrates how life without a sovereign authority would unfold. To that end, Hobbes tries to depict how each individual would act in relation to others in such a state, based on fear. These stories are hypothetical, meaning they did not necessarily occur in historical reality, although they are logically plausible. The importance of these passages lies in their power of encapsulating philosophical. Similarly, Hegel's renowned master-slave dialectic sheds light on several aspects of his entire philosophy. The central goal of this dialectical process is to find out how human beings can actualize freedom, which is closely tied to the question of what makes us human. After his highly abstract discussions concerning consciousness, Hegel's parable situates theory within a social and practical context. Hegel's master-slave dialectic a philosophical myth. Anyone who has delved into the history of philosophy has probably come across famous hypothetical narratives written to concretize philosophical conceptions. Plato's allegory of the cave from the Republic stands as a significant example from ancient philosophy. In order to elucidate his theory of forms, Plato sets up a scenario in which a group of people in a cave are deceived by shadows, which are mere reflections of reality. The objects under the sunlight. A modern instance, Thomas Hobbes' theory of the state of nature from Leviathan demonstrates how life without a sovereign authority would unfold. To that end, Hobbes tries to depict how each individual would act in relation to others in such a state, based on fear. These stories are hypothetical, meaning they did not necessarily occur in historical reality, although they are logically plausible. The importance of these passages lies in their power of encapsulating philosophical. Similarly, Hegel's renowned master-slave dialectic sheds light on several aspects of his entire philosophy. The central goal of this dialectical process is to find out how human beings can actualize freedom, which is closely tied to the question of what makes us human. After his highly abstract discussions concerning consciousness, Hegel's parable situates theory within a social and practical context. Hegel's philosophy and the phenomenology of spirit. Arguably, the most central concept in Hegel's philosophy is that of the spirit, Geist. In simple terms, Hegel's spirit refers to both the individual human consciousness and collective human consciousness, culture, politics, science, etc. That's why, as a holist, Hegel's examination of the development of human consciousness is intertwined with his examination of world history. Phenomenology of spirit, with its famously challenging terminology, offers a detailed study of the development of human consciousness in abstract terms. On the other hand, 
philosophy of right reveals how spirit attains freedom in the context of modern social order. What unites these works is their dialectical pattern. Hegelian dialectics is a process through which a concept, consciousness, or society develops into its concrete form by resolving inner contradictions in three stages. In each stage, previous contradictions are resolved by harmonizing the opposites. To put this in context, we can take a broad look at the formation of the modern state. At first, there exists a state of lawlessness, allowing individuals to act freely but failing to protect them from interference by others. In the second moment, individuals come together to form a government that protects them, but it becomes a totalitarian power that dominates them. In the final form, the two opposite aspects, freedom to act and freedom from interference, are unified through reforming the government and limiting its powers. A more conceptual example of Hegelian dialectics is the relationship between being nothing becoming, provided by Hegel himself. Hegel's master-slave dialectic from Phenomenology of Spirit follows a similar dialectical pattern. Before delving into the parable, however, it is necessary to briefly examine the work in which it is found. Work, moments of consciousness, sense, certainty, perception, and understanding. Hegel's work, Phenomenology of Spirit, can be succinctly summarized as a dialectical exploration of the development of human consciousness. Hegel begins this study in the chapter titled Consciousness, where he addresses what he calls sense certainty, described as the most immediate and basic knowledge. This type of knowledge simply refers to how we initially conceive physical things standing in front of us through our senses without any further thought. Upon encountering an object, Hegel argues that the first thing a consciousness grasps, even before perceiving its properties, are the universals of here and now. Devoid of any content, this is the moment consciousness apprehends universal categories. Since this type of knowledge is solely focused on the universals of here, space, and now, time, Hegel asserts that it does not lead to the particular knowledge of the object. The second moment of consciousness is perception, in which the individual starts to discern the properties of the object. While sense certainty is grounded in pure sensory knowledge, perception focuses on details such as color, shape, and volume. This enables the consciousness to consider the object in relation to all other objects, juxtaposing it with others based on their properties. At this point, consciousness starts engaging in negation, as it realizes that the object has that specific color, distinct from the colors of other objects. However, there arises a problem of one and many. Objects possess both particular and universal qualities. A tree is particular in its color and shape, yet universal as being part of the cognitive category of trees. The consciousness gets confused in this contradictory scenario and is unable to figure out whether the objects are diverse or unified. Hegel proceeds to assert that the first two moments are resolved into understanding. This is the complete moment of consciousness, wherein diversity and unity are reconciled by intellectually grasping what is beyond the surface-level qualities. In these moments, consciousness tries to identify the essence of things within the things themselves, leaving the subject out of the equation. It is only through understanding that Hegel manifests the need for self-consciousness, the key to absolute knowing. It is manifest that behind the so-called curtain, which is supposed to conceal the inner world, there is nothing to be seen unless we go behind it ourselves. Independence and Dependence of Self-Consciousness Lordship and Bondage Following his exploration of consciousness, Hegel moves to the second chapter of Phenomenology of Spirit, titled Self-Consciousness, where he elucidates the necessity of self-consciousness in attaining absolute knowledge. His famous parable, The Master-Slave Dialectic, is presented within the subsection titled Independence and Dependence of Self-Consciousness, Lordship and Bondage. In order to demonstrate his point, Hegel narrates a hypothetical scenario in which two conscious beings confront one another in the wild. Prior to this encounter, 
each consciousness had considered itself to be the objective standard of everything, its desires and feelings used to be the measure of everything. However, in the wake of this confrontation, another consciousness emerges with its own desires and feelings. The two consciousnesses engage in a struggle to the death to realize their power in relation to each other and establish their desires as the objective standard. The crucial point here is that each consciousness wants the other to recognize its own power. So self-consciousness cannot be attained if either of them perishes. Therefore, the triumphant consciousness decides not to kill the other one, but subordinates it to slavery. In this new relationship, the unessential consciousness is for the Lord the object, which constitutes the truth of his certainty of himself. Although initially it may appear that the master attains self-consciousness through the recognition by the slave, problems arise. After winning the battle, the master fails to apprehend his, her, limitations, seeing himself herself as a godlike being. The slave, on the other hand, comprehends his, her limits and how fragile human life is. Through subordination, the slave grasps himself herself as a finite human being, leading him her to realize that the master is dependent on himself herself for recognition. Furthermore, the master does not engage with nature, delegating all physical labor to the slave who produces products through his, her labor. As the slave produces increasingly more sophisticated products, he, she begins to see himself herself in these creations as their originator, the master completely lacks such self-reflection through work and becomes completely reliant on the slave's products. As a result, it is the slave who attains true self-consciousness through his, her, labor, and its creations. The truth of the independent consciousness is accordingly the servile consciousness of the bondsman, 